when dealing with discrete and random variables, we need to describe probabilities in some ways. So here, the concept is probability mass function, and the idea is I know the values a random variable will take. So looking at example here is I'm looking at single toss of a coin, and I want you to know what uh, the number of heads I'm going to get here. So here I'm counting a uh, number of heads from a single toss of a coin. So probabilities here are described in terms of the sample space itself. The values of the probabilities come from there. So x is equal to 1 if heads comes up, 0 otherwise. And probability x equals 1 is the same as probability of getting a head, and that's a half. Probability x equals 0 is the same as probability of tails, which is a half. In this case, I can tabulate the results. So I can say the small value x here is small x is the values that my random variable can take. And the uppercase x here is the actual random variable itself. So uppercase letters denote random variables and lowercase values denote the observed or the realized values. So x can take the value 0, 1 here and the probability is that random variable is equal to 0 is 0.5, probability is 1 is 0.5 as well. So all I'm doing here is, because random variables essentially come from sample spaces, the probabilities also come from the same sample spaces. So as I said here, uppercase letters take the random denote random variables themselves, lowercase letters denote the values, the possible values of the random variable. And so all this is, I'm writing this in this case as probability of p here with a subscript x and a lowercase x here in brackets saying this is probability that random variable x takes the value small x. So sometimes I can give this probability mass function with a formula, other times I can give it as a table. Probability of probability mass functions comes from essentially the probability rule itself. The first rule is that first uh, property is the probabilities can be negative, so that means probability mass functions must also be not non-negative, bigger than equal to zero. And if I add them all up, this all all this means is sum them up, sum all the probabilities here over x. So sum over all values of x here. The probability mass function divided and all the probabilities, they must give me one here. Here's a quick example here. This is from a paper here by Mayberg, who was looking at clutch sizes of the Spanish Imperial Eagle. So Mayberg looked at some uh, studies here, looked at fieldwork, and he looked at clutch sizes here. And uh, from his data, the probability mass function, the probability distribution of the clutch size is given in the table here. So I've got here x is the number or the clutch size itself. Random variable uppercase x denotes the clutch size, and the small value x denotes the actual values. The values are 0 up till 10 here. Here are the probabilities. The first part is what is the value of the constant c? There's a c here that's not given, it's unknown. And that actually comes essentially from looking at the sum of all these probabilities. The sum must be equal to 1, and you can try this yourself. You'll find c must be equal to 0 0.0649, so the sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1. The next part says probability that a cut size is less than 7. So let me take a look at probability the part 2 over here. Probability that the cut size is less than 7. I'm looking at probability of x is less than 7 here. That means I sum all the probabilities here. So less than 7 is the same as I can write this as less than or equal to 6 because 7 isn't included. So I add all the probabilities below 6 means I'm going to add all these probabilities up here. All those have to be added up. Once you add them, you'll get your answer. And you can finish that off yourself. The next one says, part 3 here is that in the nesting season, in the breeding season, I nest with three eggs as found, so there will still be more eggs to be laid. And the question is, what is the probability that the clutch size for this nest will be more than seven? So I'm looking here, the probability I'm looking for is that the clutch size is, is more than seven, so that is my probab the probability I'm after. And the rest of it here, I know there are already three eggs is the conditional part, so probability that x is bigger than or equal to three. So I use my rules over here, 
That means I want the intersection of those, so x bigger than 7 and x bigger than or equal to 3 over probability of x bigger than or equal to 3. And the intersection here clearly, if I look at the intersection of these two events, if x is bigger than 7 and bigger than or equal to 3, it must be bigger than bigger than 7. So the top line becomes simply x is bigger than 7. And the bottom line remains probability x bigger than or equal to 3. So you find those probabilities and put them in there, you'll be able to calculate your answer for that. Just a small note here. This is an event. x bigger than or equal to 7 is an event. I can put that as a and x bigger than or equal to 1 is event, I can put that as b here. So, actually I want here bigger than or equal to 3, I'll change that. So that relates to the question we just did. So, what I'm asking for in part 3 is, a given b, x bigger than 7, given is bigger than or equal to 3, so probability laws will still hold. So all the laws of probability still hold in this case for random variables when I think of them as subsets and events. So subsets of the random sample space here again still if I'm looking at say x bigger than 7 as a subset so all the rules still hold for example I can still look at conditional probabilities unions intersections I can still take a look at uh, the total probability law which means probability of a is probability of a intersect b plus probability of a given b so a intersect b or a intersect b complement and of course complements also work all those things still work We'll stop then and carry on afterwards.